Hey, Chuck, what day is it? What's today's day? All right. Hey, man, it's Wednesday, so you already know. It's Binge Worthy. Now, the premise of our show is that every week we will binge watch a television series, and then we come right here to the Binge Worthy podcast to discuss that series. And we will rate it based on our unique binge worthy scale now the way our show works is we're going to rate it at the beginning then we engage in a high level discussion about that program and then we rate it at the end and maybe you know at the discussion points some of our co-hosts can influence us to change our rating speaking of the rating at a number five we call it a full binge out that means this series is outstanding Standing. It is one of those properties where you will watch in one or two sessions. At a number four, it's called a full meal. Now, a full meal, it is not quite a full binge out, but it is definitely worth your time to watch it. At a number three, it's called a mini meal. And a mini meal is, eh, you know, it's not bad. It's not good either. It's just bland. Courtney always describes it as it's a TV dinner without any Lyris seasoning. At a number two, we have what's the number two? What are number two? A snack. snack. A snack. snack. Yeah, a snack. Man, I've been drinking all day. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> a all number day. two is a, not all day, but you know, earlier. A number two is a snack. And a snack is you're just watching it because ain't shit else on. You know, mm. nothing's been released new on Netflix. Hulu or Amazon Prime, and you just kind of hate watching it. And at number one, it is just a uh, cringe worthy, and that is because that is some old bullshit. Don't waste your time. And as I like to say from time to time, Chuck, why the hell did you recommend we watch this? Yeah, we talking to you. So I didn't. Yeah, well, I don't know why you running around. It's like we we talking about you, man. Oh, not about me. Not about this Chuck. Oh, double Chuck. So, Spence, since uh, since you want to turn around and get all funky with it, we're gonna start with you, Mr. Bab. How uh, are you going to rate uh, the Wheel of Time? You starting with me? I'm starting with you, man. I chose balance today. I'm choosing balance hard today. Violet, <laughs> what was Violet? If I could choose higher than the big out, I would for this show. Oh. I think this show is prophetically the best show I've seen this century. Oh, oh! <laughs> oh. oh. In the fuck you smoking? <laughs> right, that's right. The century, <laughs> dog. The century. For 22 years on the century. Wait. <laughs> I'm, not yeah. I'm just messing around. But no, uh, I'm not gonna say that. I'm just I think <laughs> this century's only been 22 years old. This century's only 22 years old. But no, I, I was I say no. Nah, it's like the best. It's like the best show I've seen. In a couple of years, sure. okay, I so really, you. really appreciate the show. I enjoyed it. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Okay. I, I I felt as though that uh, women of color have not been given their due, and this gave a good spotlight on women of color and their acting chops. And I thought that women actually are multi-dimensional in characters. And I think this show multi-dimensional women characters that definitely defy the Bechdel test all the way through the show. They didn't talk about men at all. And I think even men, whenever they spoke, they spoke about the women in reference to the women. And I thought that was a great reversal that we needed to see. And I, want, I wish that other Hollywood writers, particularly male writers, would take notes on how to write women and show them in their power and in all their flaws at the same time. All right, so I like it. Sintel, you said, what the fuck are you smoking? So I'm gonna go right next smoking? to you. Let's get this contrast going. Oh, I don't know it's a contrast. I'm just, I'm, I'm just assuming. How are you going to rate the Wheel of Time? Snack. Snack. Absolute snack. The only reason why it's a snack is because I actually finished it. Yo, it was so, I fell asleep so many times during the first three episodes. I had to actually download an app, a fast forwarding app, so I could just like get through it. I was like, just, just get me through it. Just get me through it. Just get me through it. There are, but there are shining moments to it. Like, like the lead, I love. The lead, uh, uh, Moraine, I think, I think that's her character. Moraine Sedai. Moraine Sedai is dope. Dope. Super dope. She comes with it. The the lady that is the queen of all of the Sedai's that sits on the throne murders it. 
absolutely kills it. They are like the two biggest pillars for me needle. within 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 the show. Within the show. Don't be open needle, man. But the rest of them motherfuckers, the rest of them motherfuckers. Yo, them kids is the raggediest kids. You know, you know how like you go to the store and you see a parent with some badass kids and they just won't shut up. And you like somebody come beat these kids. Every episode, I was like, somebody come beat these kids. The they out of Network control. Does not endorse beating kids. They just want to put I, that out there. I endorse beating them kids. Them kids need a whooping. All of them. Every last one of you too grown to be acting this stupid and childish. Man, rain. Stupid. Rain. Absolute like stupid. Rain. All of them. And, I, and every time rain. it rains on the screen, I'm like, oh, Lord, I wish I could hand you the rain. strap so you could beat them. I wish I could. I, I want to punch Nani. We gonna get to uh, you. Yeah. So we gonna we gonna get to you, Mr. So Mr. yeah, <laughs> and, and and the problem is is that those kids are like the foundation that the story is being built on for now, for now. I got a question. I got a question though. You didn't like her water that the Asian actor Daniel? Uh, I think Daniel. Nah, man. You know why? Because to me, he's like he's after here chasing. I, you know why? I, I want him to be great, and I know maybe the character in the book. Is probably portrayed in a different way. He seems like he's dope, but he's sniffing after he's sniffing after Moraine the entire time, and it's just it gets old after a while. Now, now, now the relationship the the, the, the relationship that that they have between between these these sorcerers per se and the and the guides that help fight them, the warders. I think that's dope. I just didn't. It's just it was too much. For me, I was like, I, I think this guy could be dope on his on his own merit, and he's just not dope on his own merit. But I can't get past the kids, and that's where the bulk of the time is spent. Mm. I can't get past it. Snap. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to jump in here. Um, I really love this series, right? It was an adventure, right? It had magic, it had heroes, it had some villains, and I thought to piggyback on Chuck. What he said, it was the women. It was how the women were written in it. They were complicated, they were political, they were multi-dimensionals, and let's be honest, the women were badasses. They were badasses throughout it. Even some of the ones that like the red woman, like, you know, at first I didn't really necessarily Leandra. like her, but she was dope. She was dope. Girl. I was like, she was doing exactly what she was supposed to do. Like she's jockeying for power. She's doing exactly what she's wanting to do. And the relationship that they had with their wards, I thought that was amazing. I I've never seen that in like popular television or anything where it's a woman who's in charge of something and then they have a male guy that protects them, but they definitely are a threshold lower than them. You know, they choose them. They choose them to be in there and it's an honor and they have a bond to do it. So it was, it was, it was, it was new to me. And I was like, oh, I enjoyed this. Um, so I'm going to actually give it a four. Yeah. Right. So That's Courtney, right. Take, Violent. Take it out. Violent. <laughs> <laughs> Take his own home. Close out uh, queen. I'm the close out queen. Y'all always let me close out. I appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> so for me, I, I was like, I'm going to hate this show. So I am pleasantly surprised that two out of three of you actually really enjoyed it and saw it for, for what the story. Why did you think we hate this show? No, 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 no. I, I thought it was, I thought it was heavy handed in uh, certain elements that I thought might hinder um, or negate a certain uh, adventure element of the series. So that was my bad. So, I mean, the, I was just like, oh, I don't know how they're gonna feel about this. This is probably gonna go in and just be all kinds of like shenanigans. But for me, I really enjoyed this series. Uh, it did have problems, don't get me wrong. It had problems, but I, I thought overall, because it was a brand new show, the pilot for me was not as strong as it could have been. I thought that the CG was a little off during the final battle. And I was like, who are these little, these little orc looking dudes? They, they really want to be orcs, but they're not orcs. What's happening? If Moraine Sedai hadn't been such a diva badass, it, 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 it really, I don't know if I would, because I was hate watching the rest of the pilot because of yeah, I didn't like Rand, and I can't say it's all the kids. I didn't like Rand as an actor. 
I didn't really like him. I wanted to punch him in his mouth the whole entire time. I just Every thought he was really, I thought he wasn't as strong as I wanted the dragon to be. Um, I did think that the guy who played uh, uh, Peregrine. Who, Perrin? Perrin. 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 Trash. I thought that, just, let me finish. Trash. I thought, weak I ass, weak ass, weak I thought he was a little weak on the, especially he's supposed to be like, you know. A like, little? Wolf person. But the, the whole, the the whole series. I really liked, the two, the two actors that I really liked was A, Egwene, the, the Indian girl. I liked her. I thought she was a very too. good actress. Um, and I, 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 I hate loved Matt because I thought he's a great actor. I thought he yeah, played he the role. It. I thought he played the role that was written for him, and he played it well. Yeah. And that's that. That's who his character was. He to me, I wanted him to be the dragon because I, this kid had so much to go through and so much that he overcame and came through. I was really rooting for him. Yo. Um. When he didn't go through but, that door, I oh, will talk about it. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> But for me, the reason I'm getting in a full binge out is because there were several standout episodes that I thought were just beastly. They were, I mean, regardless of what, it, you know, like I, the actor that played uh, Lan, uh, Alan Mondragon, mm -hmm. I thought he was wonderful. I, I thought I loved that character and the episode where he, where his friend died and he led the, the prayer. Like that yeah. to me, that scene was powerful. The mm -hmm. scene where Moraine to die, the the episode where Moraine to die was we discovered her connection with the queen, and yep. like that whole episode. The episode, I'm not. Was, I thought I was like, whoa, I did not see this coming. I didn't see it coming. I, like, I didn't what? see it coming. What? what? And just, I gotta read just these the books. line on your knees. I was you like, like, no, you get on your knees. Come back with this. I was what? like, way to bring it back around. Yeah, and I then I'm I sorry. The me. the scene when you discover who the dragon's mother was. Yep. If you don't legendary. bow down to that woman, if you don't bow that down, legendary. that is the best fight scene yep. I have seen in in years. 